Well, Chris, um, you're a, an Oldham fan, you're a businessman, and we know that Oldham Athletic are in trouble. You know, they're in the bottom two at the moment in the, the football league, could even go out. Fingers crossed that doesn't happen. But you're interested in in buying the club and, and trying to get the club back on the right track. So, first of all, tell me why why do you want to do that? Because, uh, you know, from the outside, you think, why well, I mean, it'll be a money pit, that. Why would you want to do it? Well, first of all, come... <laughs> nice to meet you, Ian, and good morning. Uh, yeah, I am an Oldham supporter. Um, my dad took me to the ground when I was about four or five years old. We used to stand on the chatty end there behind the goal. And it kind of gets in your blood. Um, so I, I, I was born in 1961. Uh, I went to St Anne's School there on Shaw Road End. And we used to walk down to the game and it kind of gets in your blood. And I, I followed them as a kid. You know, we had some really interesting matches there. Um, for example, when we beat Manchester United, I think, God, when was that, 1973? Uh, I'd, I'd be like 12. and Just things like that that kind of mean so much and stay with you. And it just turns you into a, a lifelong supporter. As they say, you, <laughs> your club chooses you at the end of the day. But, you know, I've gone off and done stuff and moved around a little bit. And um, I was watching Oldham when they were in the Premier League and uh, a little bit afterwards. And then life has sort of moved on and I've kind of looked in from afar. Um, being back in the UK for a little while and having a bit of time to reflect uh, with the, you know the COVID stuff that was going on for the past two years, I had an operation on my knees. So I've been laid up. I haven't been able to do much. And I, I've been watching them on the I follow, and, and I, I just I know I just been watching it and just thought it's how the mighty have fallen. Really, what a shame, you know. And I watched that Arrogate game, and it was just like I, I couldn't believe what was going on. You know, it, it's just awful. So. I don't know. I just sort of thought about it a little bit and reached out to some people that I know and said, "Is there anything that is there anything that we could do? Is there anything that we could do to help?" Because I don't want to see them go out of business. I don't want to see them go out of the league. You know, clearly, as as, as a fan, you know, why why on earth would I want to do that? And if I'm able to, in some way, help and do something about it, then I'd like to do it. Um, but bringing in new ideas and new ways of doing things you know for the the modern world and the you know the 21st century really so it's not a case of coming in with the old ideas and doing the same thing and papering over the cracks and you know another two or three years down the line it all goes wrong again and everybody loses money that, that's not what it's about it's just about trying to stop the rot really and rebuild it and uh, and get it back into a, a good situation where everybody's you know, can be proud of the club again, really. That, that. So what's your, what's your ultimate objective? Is it to completely take over the ownership from the current owners and All you be it. like the, yeah. the chairman and, yes. and and take it forward? Is that your objective? That's the idea, yeah. Yeah, we'd like to take it, to take the whole thing because the, there is potential in the club. It's not uh, it's not a sleeping giant. Well, come on, let's let's be honest about it. But it's it's a good club. It's always been a really strong family club. It's always had a good ethos to it you know you could bring the kids along and you could have a fun day out and and, and watch a, a cracking game of football really <laughs> you know don't have to win every game do you but just to be entertained you know and um i just like to be able to be in a position to help do that and, and just help get it back to that really you know? every Oldham fan who listens to this will then go well how much money has this guy got? You know, what sort of no. investment can he make? What's his background? What what companies, you know, what, what is, he, is, is he like a billionaire or, uh, you know, give us a little bit of an idea of what well, you could do. I mean, in, in terms of, you know, I'm not going to give out too much personal information because uh, that could prejudice things uh, going forward. But suffice it to say, um, there wouldn't be no issue in... Uh, coming into the club, doing what we needed to do and um, sort of stopping the rot and taking the club forward. You know, that that, that wouldn't be an issue. I wouldn't put myself out in a situation and, and talk to people and, and put it out there in the media if we didn't have the ability to do that. So we do have the ability to do it, OK? But I, I don't want to get anybody's hopes up there or share too much because the price will double, won't it? You know, so it's, uh, you know, you've got to take, I'll tell you what, you know, 
you probably remember what happened at Blackburn under Jack Walker, for example. And it was clear that this guy was very wealthy and he was going to put a lot of money into the football club and they bought success for a little while, you know, and they paid double for all the players that they needed to bring in there. It was absolutely crazy, really. But ultimately, uh, over time, when the money dried up, what happened, you know, the club sort of drifted back to its natural kind of place in the pecking order, really. So that's one thing you've got to be very careful of. You, you can't sort of come into these clubs and promise, you know, millions to do this and, oh, we're going to get into the Premier League in five years. And that's absolute stupidity. So what we are saying that we'll do, we'll come in and we'll run the club properly. That's what we'll do. We'll bring the right partners into the club. We'll bring some good blue chip partners into the club run it properly and run it differently. And by doing that, okay, in, in football, your turnover increases, your, your league table, it, it kind of goes hand in hand, really. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done at the bottom to secure the club and to build on the foundation that's already there. Build on those foundations a bit at a time. And that way you take the club forward on sound financial footings. Coming in with 5 million, 10 million and broadcasting it, is really not the way to do this at all. It just isn't. You know, it's, it's so the next question becomes: Have you made any contact with the current owners? Have you had any discussions with them? No, no, uh, and it's not for the lack of trying. I mean, we spoke to people around the club, as you would probably imagine, um, past and present. But in terms of the owners, the phone has not rung, so um, we are where we are. If they want to sell the club, get in touch. If they don't want to sell the club, that's up to them. Can't make them, you know. Um, that's where we are at the moment. And I, I did say to people, you know, I'd, I'd rather just put it out there when we had some knowledge or information as to what was going on. I mean, ideally, this is something I would like to have got done because... You know, we, we still don't know where we're going to be at the end of the season. We, we need to sort out this football league embargo. You know, we need to, you need to be bringing players in. You know, you need to be looking at next season as well. You know, really, in January, you need to be looking towards next season. So the longer it goes on, the, the, difficult, the more difficult it becomes to plan for next season and to do things for next season. So it, it's just, I'm baffled by, by the whole thing, really. You know, it, it just, it's not making any sense. But If you get the it, chance to move this forward, I suppose the first thing you'd want to do is see the books because yeah. uh, it'd be due diligence and of there course. will be things like, you know, you're sat in front of an image of the, the ground at the moment and that stand on the far side um, has complications. It does indeed. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, there, are, there will be debt that you would presumably have to inherit yeah. Um, you're obviously aware of all those things, but I'm um, guessing that yeah. the desperate need to see the books and have that conversation is at the forefront of your mind at the moment, is it? Yeah, very much so. That, that's exactly what we need to do. I mean, we can work around the rest of the stuff. You know, that's that's things are not insurmountable. You know, and, and I've always been quite clear that, uh, you know, we are willing to enter into a dialogue with the current owners, just you know we'll, we'll find out we we have the right people to come in and do this um and let's find a way through that, that everybody's happy with because you know there's no point and no need to have any animosity with anybody you know we've got to come in with the right intentions and the best of intentions so everybody's got to be open and honest about what they want to do um yeah i mean i have an idea of, of things you know because obviously we you know we've done our own research um i can't really pass comment on that that would be unfair you know and uh, and indeed what i know is only hearsay really um but i don't see why we couldn't work something out in the best interest of everybody you know i mean look the present owners have not had it easy and I'm, I'm not criticizing them in any way shape or form why would i you know they're there the club's still got its league status they've gone through you know a couple of hard years with covid and having to finance things and, and, and it's been a very very difficult time not just for all them athletic but it's been a very difficult time for everybody else as well you know and, and all the other clubs so i can't criticize anybody i mean they're still there and they've kept the club going which is fantastic 
you know. So maybe there just comes a point where people need to hop off the bus and we need to get another driver. That's all I'm I'm, I'm trying to do and, and uh, just find a way forward that, that everybody can get behind and we can have a little bit of success and try and get promotion to League One, you know. I've only just met you, really. I know it's virtual, um, and you seem extremely credible and ex Thank absolutely you. what the clubs seem to want. But obviously, there will be people outside of of, of you and I, and even I could sure. say, "Well, is he everything he says he is?" Of course. Um, yeah. what, what 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 do you say to the old old athletic fans who well, are? <clears throat> you know, I mean, I've never, I've, I don't hide anything about myself. You know, I, I'm a very colourful bloke you know i've done all sorts of fun things over the years you know I've, I, don't, I haven't lived in a monastery for 40 years you know um you do things in life and some things work out and some things don't work out but you get to a point now i'm, I'm 60 you know i've got a lot of experience um i've made, I made mistakes in the past I, who hasn't for crying out loud you know but then in other areas have been successful but you know i'm the sum of those parts you know so i got to a point in life where and with the people that are, are with me you know the, the people that i know there's some really really good people uh in this uh sort of group if you like you know so don't necessarily focus on the man, you know, you know, you judge a man by his deeds, not his words, you know. So what I would say, if we are successful in this endeavour, and I've put out a, a plan, like a, a, a three to five year plan as to what we need to do, we'll, in, we'll start implementing that from day one. We'll be open with the fans. We'll tell them what's going on. We're not going to hide anything. And then judge me in three to five years. You know, and uh, if we've achieved nothing, then I deserve to be sort of strung up in Oldham Town Square, don't I? You know, but I think with uh, the people that we have around us, that, that that's not going to be the case. If we sit here today, what do you think? The, I mean, I don't mean you're going to quote me an odd, but what are the odds do you think that you'll succeed? I'm not a betting man, I'm, I'll be <laughs> frank with you. So I, I would never even put a bet on that. All I can say is this. We will do what we can, okay? It is incumbent on other people to talk to us. So if that dialogue becomes open, okay, then I don't see why we shouldn't have a problem in getting this completed. That's probably a better way to look at it. You know, as it stands, we haven't spoken to the owners. And until we do, it's like me saying to you, Ian, I'd like to buy your house and you and I knock it on your door and you don't open the door. I can stand there for a year. And if you don't open your door and uh, agree a price with me, then my odds are pretty much zero, aren't they? I suppose, you know. But if you do open the door and you show me the crack in the wall and, the <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff, then we might be in with a shout of coming up with an idea and getting a price and, and doing a deal. So that is kind of where we are with this, you know. So it's, it's up to them. Please, just you know where you, you know where we are. You know, I can be contacted. It's it's not a problem. But if you don't want to speak to me, you can speak to one of my other representatives. It's absolutely fine. But at least let's have a crack at getting a dialogue going. That's all I would ask. You know. Is there anything you can do other than keep knocking on that door? Uh, apart from getting arrested for being a nuisance, I don't know really. I mean, we, 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 what can you do? I mean, you can't force anybody to do anything, can you? I mean, nor would we want to. And and and, and if they don't want to deal with us, then hey, you know that that's uh, that's the way it is. Um, I went public because I thought it might apply a little bit of pressure. Um, that's all, you know. And I have spoken to the fans, and and, and I've said you know, you care about your club, then phone them up and, uh, you know, try not to distract from what's going on on the pitch. And that's very important. And, and I don't want to do that because, you know, Shez has got a job to do and I don't really want a circus surrounding the club at this critical time. And, and, and that is important, you know, that, that we don't have this circus. And, uh, you know, it's important for the club that they are focused on um, winning games at the end of the day. So this kind of noises off thing, really. I don't want it to affect anybody. So I think that was one reason why I decided to sort of not engage too much and, and, and try and get everybody to focus on the team and 
and let's get out of this predicament if we can get out of this predicament and then we move forward from there but god you know it'd be tragic if we lost our league status at the end of the season i mean crikey you know as a fan i mean i'd be distraught as a fan you know but at least i tried right at least i've sort of said okay you know we're in a situation hello we're here let's 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 talk right so i tr i've tried I can't do any more than that, you know. That's 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 all I've tried to do. Um, I haven't seen much input from people in the council, to be honest. I haven't seen and I, I haven't seen much in, input from, you know, the local MPs in the town, which I find a bit strange considering there's 200 people work at Oldham Athletic and they could be out of a job at the end of this season, you know. So nobody wants that to happen, do they? So I find that a little strange, you know, and I just find that uh, there just doesn't seem to be in certain quarters. I, th I don't know. There just doesn't seem to be a, a, a willingness to try and do something. It's weird. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I can't describe it, really. And I, I never thought for one minute it would be this difficult. That's, that's it. Yeah.